The city of Syracuse is creating a parking amnesty program, which means if you forgot to pay one of these, and you ended up with one of these, a parking ticket, any time in the last 30 years, the city says they'll waive any late fees on any overdue parking tickets as long as you get your payment in before September 1st. Right behind me is the Delroy Beach Market, which is going to be the largest food hall in Florida when it's finished next month. We just spoke to the owners and they said it's going to be 60,000 square feet. It's going to have 25 different restaurants and it's going to be open seven days a week. Witnesses say they saw the cyclists trying to race to beat the bridge. If you look behind me, this is exactly where it happened. The man fell right between the blue and green signs as the bridge was opening. I'm outside the Onondaga County Courthouse right now where 23 year old Victoria Affitt is being charged with first degree murder. She's accused of killing the 93 year old woman inside the Skyline Apartments last month. Mayor Ben Walsh is calling the Skyline Apartments the biggest problem in Syracuse right now. Over the past couple weeks, we've seen pictures of human feces and needles in the stairwells, a murder and over 70 code violations. Upstate Hospital is about to become one of four places in the world to give the COVID vaccine to children under the age of five. Two Democratic congressmen in New York are making history. Mondaire Jones and Richie Torres will be the first black and openly gay members of Congress. Syracuse University is shutting down all in-person student activities besides classes in the wake of an increase in COVID-19 cases. The Liverpool School District is reopening schools tomorrow after switching to online learning Monday and Tuesday. One million votes have already been cast in four days of early voting. That's roughly 8% of New York's registered voters, according to the board. Early voting continues around the state through Sunday with Election Day following on Tuesday. Here at the WCNY polling site, voters are greeted with a smile. That smile belongs to polling manager Darrington Heath. <laughs> Heath is a second generation polling manager and has been in charge of the WCNY polling station for the last four years. He says he enjoys working the polls because he loves helping the community's senior citizens feel proud to vote. My mother, she did it when I was younger and when she passed away I just kind of picked up on it. I started to see the joy that she got out of doing it. I love doing it because I get to come out, I get to meet people, new people. I love to do this for the elderly people. They get to come out and you just see the spark in them. Heath encourages everyone to become polling managers or at least help out on election day in any way they can. I would really want to become poll manager. I would tell you it's a great experience. You get to meet a lot of people and you feel good knowing you're doing something for the community. He says he will continue to be a polling manager for as long as he physically can. For almost four hours today, tenants and neighbors of the Skyline Apartments testified to the illegal drug activity, unsanitary living conditions, and lack of safety that have been going on in the building for years. This is the Skyline Apartment Building. The building has been a consistent problem for the city. Hundreds of complaints have been made about the building's unsafe conditions. In March, the apartments were deemed unfit for human inhabitation. The final straw came last month when a 93-year-old woman, Connie Torrey, was murdered in her apartment. City officials are now taking further action with a nuisance abatement process. Before this, the building's owners had 30 days to make improvements, but tenants say nothing has changed. Connie Torrey's niece was among the more than 20 people who spoke at the hearing today. Any actions taken against the Green National will not bring our aunt back or lessen the pain associated with her death. However, we are also here today to support the tenants' needs for improved, cleaner, safer conditions at the skyline so that another tragedy does not happen. Some of the tenants shared stories of being robbed. The two males rushed me, assaulted me, and robbed me. Threatened. He literally told me he was going to rape me, and um, there was nothing I could do about it. And assaulted. It's been more than once I've been bum-rushed. Many of them holding back tears. It's difficult to live that way. And some holding back anger. I have been down this road before. So what happens now? That decision is up to Syracuse City Police Chief Kenton Buckner. He can decide to lift the nuisance order, impose fines, or even shut the skyline down. The skyline is one of the only affordable housing options in the city, Shutting the building down could be an even bigger issue for these residents. 
I'm Morgan Glixman reporting for NCC News.